Today, I'm gonna to talk about the economy. Uh, global economy, a uh, pulse has returned, but just barely. October, October non-farm payroll surprised the upside, 128,000. Headline unemployment ticked up uh, 0.1% to 3.6. Chicago PMI crashed, plunging to 43, a four-year low. That's an incredibly low number. Uh, U.S. construction spending is up, gaining 0.5% in September, a nine-month high. U.S. Q3 GDP falls to 1.9%, continuing an 18-month plunge. And this current quarter, fourth quarter, looks even weaker still, possibly getting as low as 1.5. Uh, now that the uh, uh, Fed isn't going to cut interest rates anymore, uh, everyone's wondering where the earnings are going to come from. Much of the global rally is on slightly improving PMIs, and that it. It's all hope and speculation, and of course, liquidity driving markets. Weekly jobless claims fall to 211,000, close to a half century low. U.S. productive productivity plunges sharply, down 0.3% in Q3, and that is completely a result of the trade war-induced freeze on capital spending by U.S. business this year, and it's really been going on for several years. China cuts interest rates for the first time in three years. PMIs there tick up also. Uh, weekly jobless claims, uh, again, hugging those lows, so jobs are not an issue. <coughs> uh, here's our trade war indicator, and again, the soybean market seems to be giving up on the trade deal, which has been announced more times than any deal in history that hasn't actually happened. The administration's clearly trying to get as much political leverage as they can by uh, with this deal by announcing it almost every day. Clearly, soybean farmers aren't buying it, and they are selling into these announcements. Uh, Bill Davis, my man, are you here? Uh, <clears throat> yes, good morning, John. What do you got for us today? Um, all right, a couple of deals. <clears throat> Uh, on the short side, AAP reported yesterday, and they gapped down, uh, kind of got beat up a bit on the earnings. So look for a bit of a little bounce here and then look to short it, okay? Uh, the other shorts, I do like RS, Reliant Steel. It's way overbought, okay? We do get some weakness in the market. I would expect that to drop. Um, it has been a very strong stock, by the way. So I will throw that caveat out there. So just wait for a little bit of a sell-off here, which I, I kind of concur with John should be coming. Um, on the long side, you know, tread carefully. Uh, Domino's, I do like. That seems to be a real runaway winner. And it looks like McDonald's is actually setting up for a buy here, somewhere in that 195, 196 area. Again, keep the, you know, wait for these prices or wait for the stock to come to these prices, see some firmness or weakness, and then look to trade them. Uh, okay, well, uh, are you worried at all with long side recommendations with the market at an all-time high? Yes. I mean, my recommendation would be to dabble half the unit size that you normally would at this point, okay, if you're going to trade long. Or conversely, put on a hedge, enter long stock, long put, <clears throat> protect yourself. Uh, you know, we'll go over the target that I see for the market, I guess, when we can talk about the index. But quite frankly, it's not that far away. And, uh, you know, all the technicals I have are basically way overbought, similar to your, oh, your yeah. timing model. Mainly overbought. <laughs> okay, let's go through the first batch of questions here. Matthew wants to know, has the multi-year decline in commodities ended? Uh, and the answer is yes for the short term. However, we will almost certainly have another recession scare sometime next year or even an election scare. And uh, that will almost certainly uh, cause a retest of the recent lows in all commodities. So uh, the volatility will continue, but the long-term trend is probably up. Uh, the next recession is probably going to be so short 
that people will start discounting the recovery now. You know, if you're only looking for a two-quarter recession and you're looking at a long, uh, long-term view of your stock, you probably want to use any kind of dips to buy now. And off, a lot of the buying in Tesla, by the way, has been that kind. I hope all of you found this helpful, and hopefully it has also improved your trading. This is John Thomas, the Matt Hitchman Trader, signing off for today. Good luck and good trading.